Okay guys, um, today we are going to talk about a very very serious topic. Okay, this topic right is so 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 serious that it's actually worth a lot of money. Let's go! Okay, um, I'm going to like, oh, I can smell my food man. Never mind, I just finish this video first. Okay, so this this video is so important because i'm going to talk about this thing called renewal of investment in terms of like renewal of your property investment you see many people are not facing the fact that their property is getting older uh, property prices are dropping in their property and and i i really don't understand this point you know because you see uh, let's say today you buy a thousand per square feet and the property actually goes up until like thousand five per square feet okay we are talking about investment properties not the properties you stay because if you stay you enjoy staying there you wouldn't sell it away that that is the fact right i mean i'm like you i i'm also like this but i talk about investment property you buy at a thousand the property goes up to a thousand six tomorrow if the property goes down to a thousand five then a thousand four then a thousand two a thousand three you know around there so don't you think that it's time to renew your property what are you waiting for you know one thing that people do not understand is that yes your property you buy your property on new launch that is like the best price then your property starts to go up then on top you get the best price then maybe you get some more increment in the next five years you know when it reach like 15 20 years you realize your property start to become stagnant you know the property prices start to fluctuate the property prices start to go like on a petto it doesn't go up anymore you know then you guys should be renewing your investment you know what i mean by renewing investment you should be selling away and buying another one you know after all the property that you buy is for investment you know you should be making uh capital gain in your property you know people are telling me that hey aaron you know i make capital gain you know you can't you see i bought for like 1 million and now it's like 1.3 million then i will be telling the customer hey mr tan but you were supposed to make 1.5 million you know but you decided not to sell it off and now it's 1.3 million and you still don't sell it off and you are what waiting for it to become older and and then go down and come on please okay please don't tell me about m block potential you know i get so irritated when every single old condo units owners are telling me or even my friends like customer are telling me they are going for on block potential Guys, do you know in history how many percent of all uh, condos go for on block potential? You know the numbers are so 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 damn small. It's not even a percent. It's not even one. It's like point something something something. You know, so to to be realistically going for on block, you need to firstly have a potential, meaning that the developer sees a potential in this piece of land. That's the first thing. Second thing, the developers feel that this piece of land can sell. Third thing, I can tell you most of the old units right that have old condos that never go for on block before, they were not successfully on block the first time. They will always be successful only on the second, third, or even fourth, fifth time. Why? Because when you go for on block, everyone's one higher price. Owner A wants this price, owner B one higher, owner C one higher, then the reserve price will get higher and higher. It gets so high that the developer feels that it's not worthy to buy. So please do not, you know agents that are selling old houses they have nothing else to tell you you know all they can tell you is a hey, buy here buy here here got on block potential every time you go and see an old condo unit they will tell you hey, when the condo is old there's an on block potential okay to me it's for you to believe or not you know because they are trying to sell you the house that is what they will say it's normal okay so people should be renewing their their property they, they should be knowing what is the realistic paper value of their uh, of their property a realistic value sorry not paper value paper value is a lot higher but when you want to sell it off no one's going to buy it from you and when the property get old right you realize there's no transaction there's no transaction not because people don't want to sell it's because people don't want to buy you know people are not willing to buy an old property because when you buy an old property you need to renovate it you know so there's a lot of reasons to the property market that that the public are not seeing it so you need to learn how to renew your investment. When your investment reach a point where it's like really petio or it has a highest point, then you have to start to think about you how to sell it off, you know, and what to buy. 
when you sell it off, it's going to be a big problem also because it's not easy to sell old property. Not anyone would want to buy old property. Um, there will be some like uh, own stay buyers that may have a higher chance because own stay buyers will feel that like the unit is bigger, you know, they, they want to stay here because it's near to their parents, you know. Own stay buyer and investment buyer is different, totally different. The needs are different, okay? So you may still have that chance, but the chance is really, really low because own stay buyer that buy, right? Uh, they may need to spend a lot of money to re-renovate the place to stay. So, this is one thing. So, second thing is, stop, stop, stop talking about rental you. You know? You see, in Singapore, right, I just have this conversation with uh, one of the customers and he's from like UK and he actually uh, shared with me a lot also and it's very good because uh, we, we can take examples or case study from many other countries that's really... Uh, on what is really happening and what will happen to our local property market. You see, in Singapore, right, everyone has a HDB flat. You know, everyone can own a HDB flat. It's as low as like 200 over 1,000 or even lower. Those older units that's like 40 over years old, three-room flat, they're going at like 200 over 1,000 only. So, in Singapore, right, who are the tenants? Are they Singaporeans? They are not. When the, You see, how can the majority tenants be Singaporeans? You know, Singaporeans are not renting the private properties. They are not renting the HDB flats. The majority tenants in Singapore are foreigners, are PRs, are people who coming here to work. You know, they are not Singa- They are not local Singaporeans. Unlike other countries like Japan, China, Taiwan, people come from different certain or different towns or different cities to come to the main cities to work. So the tenant is actually a local, but not in Singapore. So. That will never be good rental you in Singapore. How can there be good rental you in Singapore? There will only be good rental you when Singapore is flooded with foreigners. You see? And if people are looking like rental you relates to capital gain, yes, it's correct, you know, by right, the fundamentals in other countries work that way. But it doesn't work that way fully in Singapore, you know? Because our ten- tenants are not Singaporeans in the first place, our tenants are foreigners. But today, right, uh, if you were want to... So in Singapore, right, people own houses. People buy houses more than they rent houses. But when you go to other countries, people rent houses more than they buy houses. You know, to buy a house like wow in other countries. In Singapore, to buy a house like every youngsters go to BTO, go and do balloting or sales of balance. You know, everyone gets a chance to buy a house. It's very different idea and very concept. So... If you, you want to, you need to understand that capital gain, right, also doesn't just relate to rental you. And every property here should have a rental you one. And the rental you can be like, on average, only 2% in Singapore. It will never go high. And the older the property, right, the harder is it to rent it out. Because the tenants, once a new property pop up beside old property, the tenant will just shift to the new property. You know, uh, of course, there's a size difference and everything, but who the wants a new property? You know, so it makes a very, very big difference. And when it comes to buying, right, the the demand for people wanting to buy this place is also a big importance to capital gain. So please do not get bided by rental you. You know why am I telling you this? Because I met so many people, so many people, everyone tells me about rental you, rental you, rental you. Even in HDB, people are telling me, oh, there's high rental you. But people are neglecting the the capital gain. You know, HDB prices are dropping. Then people are telling me rental you is very high. So what basically you are just redrawing. Okay, I'm not gonna to touch on the topic because there was already a video on it. The the topic of the video is a is HDB worth it, okay? So you can go and check it out. So basically if you look at it in even in a prior property situation, you cannot just focus on the rental you. You have to focus on whether there's demand in the sales of the property here. Is there anyone that wants to stay in this place? Anyone that wants to buy this project, buy this condo to stay? You know, it makes a big difference. If today you're staying near a MRT station, then yes, there is demand that people want to stay near this MRT station. But if today you're not staying near the MRT station, then you are just hoping that there is rental you because there's a Japanese school there. Okay, but don't forget, besides the Japanese school, there's still five other six projects. You know, how many Japanese can a Japanese school have? Then, then in the next thing, right, is like, who is going to buy from you? The Japanese are going to go back to their country, so the Japanese will not buy from you. Then who is going to buy from you? And don't forget, when the Japanese buy, they have to pay a stamp duty of like extra additional ABSD or 20%. So who is going to buy from you? You know, I don't know. So I'm telling you guys this because this is a fact. 
this is the real thing that is happening in the market and people are neglecting it okay so when you do investment right you need to be able to analyze if you're not able to analyze then find a good agent you know find a good agent like Aaron okay so can't you just like laugh you know it's just a joke lah okay so you have to find a good a you see I feel so guilty saying it again you have to find a good agent okay so you find a good agent right then you are able to see like what is the growth of your property at have you missed which cycle follow up with your agent uh like maybe uh, every quarter or every like half a year look at the prices is the property of these prices going stagnant what is that improvement analyze it see whether there is a, a a space for growth if there's no space for growth then you got to sell it off buy another one because it's an investment okay so we are all talking about investment we're not going to talk about own stay because there's going to be a next video on own stay then like on emotions okay i'm going to talk about later okay so anyway you have to understand this so condo progression you got to know when to renew and you got to ignore rental you this is two big main points okay two big main points in investment okay so that's all for today's video and my food is is cold okay i'm going to eat see you bye bye